Hello from Suffolk, England, where after a spectacular cloudburst last evening, a rainbow floated over the village. Today we'll see more heavy showers by the late morning, but the weather should be dry and cloudy for much of the weekend. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. It's Friday the 1st of May, in the year of our Lord 2020, and it's time for a dose of civilised calm. This is Mark's Almanac, your regular respite from the madness of World War V, recorded in the peace of the English countryside. Lord Emsworth, meanwhile, unaware of the solicitude which he was causing, was down in the meadow by the kitchen garden, drooping over the comfortable sty which housed his preeminent sow, Empress of Blandings, twice in successive years silver medalist in the Fat Pigs class at the Shropshire Agricultural Show. The noble animal, under his adoring eyes, was finishing a late breakfast. The ninth Earl of Emsworth was a resilient man. It had not taken him long to get over the first sharp agony of the discovery that Rupert Baxter was about to re-enter his life. This morning, Baxter was forgotten, and he was experiencing that perfect happiness which comes from a clear conscience, absence of loved ones, congenial society, and fine weather. For once in a way, there was nothing which he was trying to conceal from his sister Constance. No disrupting influences had come to mar his communion with the Empress, and the weather as almost always in this favoured spot, was wonderful. We have seen spring being whimsical and capricious in London, but it knew enough not to try anything of that sort on Blanding's Castle. That's from P.G. Woodhouse's Uncle Fred in the Springtime. Perfect weekend reading. It's May Day today, the Feast of the Apostles, St. Philip, and St. James the Less, who were martyred for proclaiming Christ crucified and risen, and whose bodies were brought together from the East to Rome at the start of May 14 centuries ago, where they still rest, in a place of honour in the Church of Santi Apostoli. Also on this day in 1707, the Act of Union united Scotland and England to form the United Kingdom of Great Britain. The historian Simon Sharma called it one of the most astonishing transformations in European history. Here's a poem, an extract from Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And then I turned and held my finger up, and bade him mark that howsoe'er the world went ill as he related, certainly the thrushes still sang in it, at which word his brow would soften, and he bore with me in melancholy patience, not unkind, while breaking into voluble ecstasy, I flattered all the beauteous country round, as poets use the skies, the clouds, the fields, the happy violets hiding from the roads the primroses run down to carrying gold. The tangled hedgerows, where the cows push out impatient horns and tolerant churning mouths twixt dripping ash boughs, hedgerows all alive with birds and gnats and large white butterflies, which look as if the mayflower had sought life and palpitated forth upon the wind. Hills, vales, woods, netted in a silver mist, farms, granges doubled up among the hills, and cattle grazing in the watered vales, and cottage chimneys smoking from the woods, and cottage gardens smelling everywhere confused with smell of orchards. That's almost all for this week. I'll be back on Monday. If you know someone who could use a touch of calm, do please share this. If you're looking for a Friday film to watch tonight, how about Seabiscuit, a life-affirming true story of a horse that won against the odds during the Great Depression. If you need some music to wake you up, how about the one and only Eva Cassidy singing Over the Rainbow? 
I'd like to thank Bob for introducing me to this years ago. Once heard, never forgotten. One day, I'll wish upon a star, and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Until Monday, stay civilized, keep calm, and please keep washing your hands. Have a lovely weekend.